Okay, so we are going to be looking at the difference in functional leg swing of this left leg in this patient. And so the right side was the before visceral treatment and the left side was after. And so interestingly, the first thing that you can see is if you look at this right side, you can tell that this is significantly more extended than this line is. And so just there's just something kind of in this region that's holding that in sort of a tilted state. And so if we watch this play in really slow motion, actually let's just see where these legs go to begin with. So that one's going into extension. That one's going into extension. And so in the efficient state, what should happen is when the leg goes back, we should get dissociation or this idea of this femur bone should be able to move independently of the pelvis. The pelvis should be able to move independently of the spine or the trunk, which is here. And so if we watch what happens. extending that leg, that's about it. At that, after that point, watch where movement occurs. A couple interesting things happen. When the hip stops, we get two things occurring. Number one, you can see this crease right here. And if I zoom this way in, you can see there's a crease in the mid lumbar spine. That is the stress point. And so if we watch that when she extends more, that stress point becomes more evident. There's more hinging occurring there. And so we never want that in running. We always want the hip to extend from this point isolated. So the leg will be here, and then it swings back to this position. Excellent hip extension on a stable pelvis and lumbar spine. So you can see here, she extends, and the hip stops, and where does the movement happen? It happens with the pelvis on the lumbar spine. You get that extension, and then this interesting thing happens. You see this rotation. The pelvis actually kind of goes back and over to the right. So if we watch this again, it kind of twists back that way. And what your, your clue here, well, you'll see this little shadow go back. And so if we just kind of let that play, and you can see it's nice to come forward right about there. It just stops at the hip, lots of stress in the low back, and this just kind of clunking. And so let's look at after. So the treatment that we did was focused on freeing up the viscera, particularly the viscera on the left side of the abdomen. And you can see there's even a couple little red marks from where I was pushing. Now again, the emphasis of what we want to have happen is we want to have isolated motion. We want this leg to be able to go at least this far back. Super important for running efficiency. We want the pelvis to move a little bit. And generally, we don't want to see a ton of movement at the lumbar. And if we do, we want it to be segmental so each little level will do its share. So let's watch what this does. So flexion forward. Look at the difference. And so not only does the, let the hip keep extending, can you tell there is no longer that pinching hinge point? This no longer exists over there, and I think that's super cool. You can also then, in this sort of zoomed-in state, you can see how excellent the hip extension is versus the pelvis. Pelvis is extending a little bit. Lumbar is only extending a slight amount. We have to we go to here. You can see that the hip is still angled down. The pelvis is extending a little bit, but just tons of stress there. And so for this individual, that was the the big key for low back pain. And then ultimately a lot of the symptoms she was having going into her leg is that every time she tried to extend this leg, this was the stress point or the motion point. And despite all of the things we did, she did stretching her hip. It was moving, mobilizing the viscera 
in this region to allow movement to happen up and down, to allow movement to happen with subtle rotation of the viscera, let this system get long, and it let this hip extend in a healthy way. And so let's watch this one more time, and we'll see if they're relatively coordinated here. And so nice, just open hip extension on that left picture there. So that is the true power and efficacy of doing visceral work on a runner, especially when you've been doing standard stretches and there's still a significant motion deficit and pain and dysfunction.